the mechanics of breathing, fast facts. So this is a summary video geared towards the Leaving Cert Biology course and it's only covering the mechanics of breathing. Please watch the more detailed video on bugbears for all of the other content. So breathing is about inspiration, taking air into the lungs, inhaling, and expiration, releasing air out of the lungs, exhaling. But before you deal with the specifics of breathing, you have to know some essential information, basically some fundamental anatomy, the anatomy of the thorax, your chest and the respiratory organs. And these labels are very important. Make sure you can label these on a diagram and remember that your larynx is your voice box. Always remember that. And note that the bronchi, the bronchioles and the alveoli are found in your lungs. A good place to start is by practicing labeling diagrams. Something like this might appear in your exam. So there's your larynx, and then you have your trachea, which is your windpipe, and you can see those C-shaped rings of cartilage that prevent the inward collapse. And the trachea is going to branch into two bronchi. One is called a bronchus, and then it further divides down into the bronchioles. And at the end of the bronchioles are these little sacs, the alveoli. It's here in the alveoli that gas exchange takes place. So oxygen is going to pass through the walls of the alveoli into the blood capillaries and then carbon dioxide will pass from the blood capillaries through the walls of the alveoli into the lungs where it's exhaled. So let's talk a little bit about the lungs. So your lungs are located in your thorax or your chest cavity and you have two lungs. They are these spongy organs, very light, filled with air. Your lungs are surrounded by two membranes. They're called pleural membranes. And in between both membranes, a fluid is secreted. And this allows for the friction-free movement of the lungs. So just think of your lungs surrounded by these two membranes, which are very close together, except there's a little layer of liquid in between them. So let's take a closer look at your chest cavity or your thorax. The walls of the thorax are made up of the ribs and there are 12 pairs of ribs, really important. In my diagram, which is very basic, there's only 10 visible, but there are 12 pairs of ribs. And in between the ribs are the intercostal muscles. So let's just take a look at your rib cage. You can see at the front of it is the sternum or your breastbone. And then you have the ribs and in between the ribs are those intercostal muscles, which wrap the whole way around to the back where you find the vertebrae. The base of the thorax is made up of the diaphragm, which is a flat sheet of skeletal muscle, the most important muscle in breathing. And when it's relaxed, not contracting, it's dome shaped. Really important to remember that. The pleural membranes are really important and they actually help you understand what happens in breathing. So we'll take a closer look. There's the inner membrane, which covers the surface of each lung. And then there is the outer membrane, which actually sort of sticks the lung to the inside of the rib cage and to the bottom of the diaphragm. And this means that when the rib cage and the diaphragm move, the lungs are going to move also. They're going to stretch and then recoil. Carbon dioxide is the gas that controls breathing, so it's the need to expel carbon dioxide that drives the breathing process. The more carbon dioxide in the blood, the faster the breathing rate, so the more breaths you'll take per minute, but also the deeper the breaths you'll take. Carbon dioxide is an acidic gas, which means that it lowers the pH of the blood, and this is detected by chemoreceptors. The level of carbon dioxide in the blood will increase with vigorous exercise, and this is why there's an increase in your breathing rate. The average adult at rest will take between 12 and 20 breaths per minute, and this is reliant on a number of factors, age being one. Breathing is controlled by the brain, and the part of the brain that regulates breathing is the medulla oblongata. It's important that you can recognise its location at the base of the brainstem. So let's go on and cover the mechanics of breathing, inhaling first. Increased levels of carbon dioxide are detected. This results in nervous impulses being generated in the medulla oblongata and being sent to the intercostal muscles and diaphragm. The intercostal muscles and diaphragm contract, the rib cage moves up and out and the diaphragm flattens. The thoracic volume increases and the pressure decreases and air moves into the lungs because it moves from high pressure to low pressure. The rib cage moved up and out because the intercostal muscles contracted and the diaphragm contracted and flattened. This movement increased thoracic volume. It made much more room or space in the thorax. And the lungs moving with the ribcage and the diaphragm fill this space. There's a decrease in thoracic pressure. And this also means that there is a decrease in the pressure inside the lungs, the air pressure inside the lungs. So air is going to rush into the lungs. It's going to move from areas of high pressure outside the lungs to an area of low pressure inside the lungs. So we now know that inhaling is an active process. There was all that muscle contraction involved. And so now it's on to exhaling. The intercostal muscles and the diaphragm relax. The rib cage moves in and down. And because the diaphragm has relaxed, it returns to dome shape. Thoracic volume is now decreased and pressure increases. 
air is forced out of the lungs, moving from high pressure to low pressure. So when the intercostal muscles relax, the rib cage moves in and down, and when the diaphragm relaxes, it returns to dome shape. So there's less room or space in the thorax, which means the lungs are also occupying less space. They're squished into a smaller space. So this means there's going to be an increase in thoracic pressure, smaller space, tight squeeze. And this means also that there's going to be an increase in pressure in the lungs. So the pressure in the lungs increases and air is forced out. Air moves from areas of high pressure to low pressure. So exhaling is a passive process. There's no muscle contraction involved. So remember, you can always press pause if you need to. So have a go at the past exam papers, check the answers in the official marking scheme, and remember to revisit material frequently. Do a little, but do it often, otherwise you're going to forget it. That's the key to success. Best of luck.